What's the word, y'all? I hope all y'all had a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, bro. I just love this day mostly because it's basketball from the very early part to the very end. The clock has went past midnight, ladies and gentlemen. We've had like 13 hours of straight hoops, and it was insane. I know a lot of people were talking bad about it before it even started. People saying, man, the NBA got to be bad at picking their games. And even after it just wrapped up, people are still saying it was a bad day. And I'm just being honest with you, I think you just don't enjoy ball. The first game of the day to the last game of the day, it was nothing but straight bangers. Even gave you a little moment in one of the games where you could take a nap. I think that's the perfect holiday season, and I'm here to talk about it. I think the title of this video is like, Jokic is inevitable because because he really is. I, I, I was a firm believer before the season started that like no matter how good of a season Nikola Jokic was going to have, I think the politics of everything was not going to allow him to win an MVP award. There's only a few people in NBA history to win three back to back to back, and I just thought that the voters would be like, uh, nah, we don't know if we want to put him in that category just yet. He's making it hard. I mean, if you ask me right now who's the MVP of the season, I don't have a legitimate answer between Tatum, Giannis, Jokic, Embiid, KD. I would argue those are the top five guys. Actually, when we talking MVPs, I'm not even going past five anymore. Those are my top five candidates, and I don't know the order. But now, the Denver Nuggets hold the sole spot for the number one seed. And, and you know, things are looking better. If you look back on my video from maybe three weeks ago or so, I was I was trying to figure out what teams are contenders or pretenders, and I had a really hard time once we got to the Denver Nuggets. And my main argument against it was the fact that their defense had been dreadful this season. At that point, I think they were 28th in basketball. They allowed the highest uh, field goal percentage at the rim. It was just all, all gloomy and bad. And not to mention the bench had been terrible as well. When if Jokic is not on the court, then every time he comes back in, it feel like he playing catch up, and that's still kind of the case. We're going to talk about that in a second. But since that video, they've kind of put it together defensively. They've jumped up to 24th in basketball in the season, but better than that, they have a top 10 defense in the last couple of weeks, which is a great, great sign. This game today, obviously upset that Book didn't get to play as he wanted to. You saw he tried to go out there and, and do his thing, but Landry Shaman stepped up. Damian Lee hit some huge shots down the stretch, so they held their own, but I feel like if they had Devin Booker, you know, things might have been different, but I still enjoyed this game so very much from Jokic dropping what a 40 point triple double on Christmas to Aaron Gordon catching the body and showcasing why he should be in the conversations for an all-star appearance now I know the Western Conference is ridiculous or, or I guess the NBA in general is ridiculous so he probably will not make it but he should be in consideration because he's having an amazing season and to see Jamal Murray have another really good game on national TV and put it all together for it to be the perfect game for the Denver Nuggets and but the thing that scares me about the Denver Nuggets as good as they are like I predicted they would have the most win in the Western Conference because I know that Yoke is that good and with Jamal Murray coming back to form Michael Porter Jr. being back I knew they were gonna win a ton of basketball games the thing that scares me the most about them though is the fact that when Jokic is on the bench it seems like people just running around and not doing nothing and and, and someone said recently that they think a part of that is a product of Jokic being so goddamn good that the system is him so when he's not in they don't have a, a secondary system to run with the bench people um which I guess is a theory worth talking about but in general I just think they need a, a couple guys people kind of assume that bones was going to be that guy but people have to realize bones is a year two player and it's not like he was a top five pick or something uh, even though he has a bright future in his league i don't i didn't expect him in year number two to be like oh i'm about to be the sixth man and i'm gonna take over the offense once jamal is on the bench or, or Jokic is on the bench but they need to figure out something because there's a lot to be desired with that second unit and i was projecting a little bit if you watched the videos earlier this season i was like oh before the season started i was like hey it's gonna be zeke naji zeke naji gonna get minutes and they're gonna need those minutes he don't really play he played today and it just it looked bad like i'm saying the bits look bad i think he had what four fouls in less than 10 minutes like it was rough out there but both versions of their starting unit are great jamal murray kcp bruce brown aaron gordon and Jokic. of course that's what michael porter jr being out with his injury and then the one with michael porter jr in replacing bruce brown is even better than that first one so like both of their starting units are so amazing but it seems like everything outside of I guess six. I'm putting Bruce Brown at six because he's been a great pickup for them. Shout out to that. They they basically stole him away from the, the Brooklyn Nets. Gave him, it seemed like nothing for what his production could be on a really good team. But everything out there is a struggle. And I don't know how you fix that, how you remedy that. I don't know if they're they're not usually a team that will make a big time trade. Even though the Aaron Gordon deal, the Aaron Gordon trade has been amazing so far. Um, but still, I got a lot of love for the Denver Nuggets. They gave us a great show on Christmas and we love that. The second best game of the day for me was the Philadelphia 76ers beating the New York Knicks. 
and the mecha um, mostly because it gave us a, a lot of different storylines to talk about before this game even started this man whoa just talk, talking about uh james harden might go back to to houston what on christmas this is what we doing right now Woes, we reporting on this man who got a hoop in 15 minutes that's what he did um and early in this game it felt like it was a new york knicks game bro they was you know obviously on the a game win streak a little while ago and now they're in three game losing streak after this one and it felt like they were just about to pick up that same momentum because julius randall came out very early and he was hooping um jalen brunson did a couple big shots to start off the game and yeah the first quarter score was 37 to 25 like they really went out there and hooped they butt off and then i remember specifically on the broadcast this had to be middle through the second quarter whoever was commentating i don't remember the, the names and because it's all blended together we had five games and they were saying joel and b has been relatively quiet so far today from that moment that man Jordan b put on that mvp cap and said i'm here and he really took over this game between him harden and george and yang that's all they really needed today to win and harden is playing really good basketball so obviously not the same basketball he's playing in Houston where he's averaging 35 points per game and doing ridiculous stuff. But this is a better version, the best version that we've seen of him in like the last season and a half. And that is a good sign because they need stuff like this. 29 points, 13 assists. And what I was so impressed with is some of the, the, the turnovers that he caused. He, he knew that he was on national TV. I, I am a firm believer that when players know that they on national TV, they just perform better because he knows that like 75 to 80 percent of the people watching this game won't be able to watch this next game because they ain't got league pass so i need to get him a show and let them know i'm still him maybe i'm making that up but that's what it felt like for james today and even in the post game presser george niang was like hey they was playing drop coverage on me and i ain't seen that since college and the yang game was out the minivan they said it a hundred times on the broadcast 16 points from him and they turned that game around in a split second. Uh, we still don't know exactly what happened to Jalen Brunson. I hope he's okay because, again, he's been playing great basketball for the Knicks. And this would be terrible for them to have this eight-game winning streak. And then now, in a blink of an eye, things change, like, rapidly. So, uh, see if they put it together. The next game, Golden State Warriors with the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, I know that the Warriors controlled this game for a great majority of it. But I think what made it interesting was the antics. The thing that I hated the most about it is that the refs... The refs also know they're on national TV. How about we talk about that? They know when they're on national TV because they just blow them. There is no reason for it to be as many texts as it was today. It just wasn't. I understand the tech if people get uh, start throwing punches, pushing each other, maybe even yapping at the ref. But when we get to people talking to each other, that is not that should not be a technical fact. And and, and I don't agree with Stephen A. Smith on a lot of stuff. <laughs> a majority of stuff I don't agree with Stephen A. Smith. But that was one thing I did agree um, with him on, saying that the the refs think that we are here to watch them, and that was not the case. But this was a huge win for the Warriors because obviously with no Steph Curry, a lot of people, and me included, predicted that they were about to go on a huge slump because we saw what they looked like without him on the court. They had like an offensive rating was like a 98, which is god awful with him off the court um, and, and the, before the injuries. But since then, they've been they've been waking up. Obviously, Jordan Poole kind of slides into the Steph Curry role. Even of course he's not Steph Curry, but he can play it where the off ball movement is so great, getting himself open shots. Draymond Green with three points, 13 assists, 13 rebounds. Just Draymond being Draymond. On the other side, I was very disappointed in Jaren. I was very disappointed in Jaren. This was your this was your opportunity to show the world that you belong at DPOY conversations. And for you to come out there and have five fouls in what ten minutes or something like that at one point in the game, it's unacceptable to Jaren. It's unacceptable. Boston will occasionally just come out and hit every shot in the world, and you have no chance. And that's what happened today. They hit eight threes in the first quarter alone, 36 total points from Jalen Brown to Tatum having a great game on Christmas with Deuce. Don't even care that his pops is out there going crazy. But this was the conference finals right here. This is a conference finals preview. Obviously, Chris Middleton didn't play, and I know a lot of people are going to discredit the Celtics because of that. I, I mean, it's a part of the game. Everybody's going to have injuries. I mean, we will see once they're fully healthy. I'm not going to say because the Boston Celtics won this game that I'm picking them to win the Eastern Conference now. It's not. We're not going that deep. Um, but they did come out and they showed the world, like, hey, I know our offense has been struggling over the last couple weeks. I know we lost our last three home games, but we still actually like that. And they showcased that to the world. I was disappointed in the Bucks, though. Again, no Chris Middleton, so obviously the offense is going to be iffy. But, like, I, I was more disappointed. Maybe it was the defense. Yeah, I think I was more disappointed in the defense than their, their lack of shooting. This team in general just doesn't have a lot of great shooters, um, which is a scary thing if you Giannis or whatever. Giannis ended up with 27 points. Didn't feel like he had 27. One of his worst games, I would say, of the season. 
27 points still 27 points we get what i'm saying when it comes to overall impact on the offensive or defensive side of the ball i feel like i didn't get a lot of Giannis. that's credit to the boston celtics because they packed the paint hey we gonna let y'all shoot uh y'all got people that we might trust but at the end of the day we really don't um and, and Giannis needs those people around him to maximize himself and to maximize the team and they don't really have a lot of great three-point shooting i mean i don't know if the numbers back that up and I, I guess i'll look it up you know they have the 20th best three-point percentage in basketball they're shooting the ninth most so you can maybe do some math to figure out if that's good or bad i mean let me compare it to like the previous season i feel like uh the last season they were really good three-point shooters and and obviously the envy the championship season two yeah the season before that they were ninth in percentage obviously the volume is super high as well number six in value with with ninth percentage is actually insane the last game was the lakers versus the dallas mavericks this was the game that you could have fell asleep on and that's exactly what i did um, in the middle of the third quarter, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's Christmas. You know, you get a couple plays, you eat a little bit of dinner, and you go sit on the couch to watch some hoops, and you kind of you kind of just doze off, and that's what happened in the third quarter. Um, actually, I saw a tweet. Hold on. Let me let me pull up this tweet because I thought it was insane, and I must have been asleep once this man Darvin Ham did this. The Lakers have played a five-guard lineup against the Mavs with Russell Westbrook, Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, Patrick Beverly, and, and Lonnie Walker. I must have fell asleep because I did not remember that. Um, and apparently, according to the comments under that tweet, uh, Christian Wood was lighting their ass up when their five was out there. So the, the Lakers are just such a rough spot without Anthony Davis being there, bro. Le LeBron gave us a, a great performance, hit all his free throws, 38 points. And he was excited. He was still having fun for it to be Christmas and stuff. And I think they him... He really enjoys it. Was it third, 17, 17 games on Christmas so far in his career, which is ridiculous. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's all. That's too much. I, I appreciate y'all watching. Um, hopefully, y'all had a happy holidays. I got a link in the description to, I should have probably said this at the top, but thank you so much for watching. I have another channel. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. You can't even be doing it, whatever. Um, actually, don't subscribe to all the channels. There's a gaming channel. There's a, another channel, another NBA channel. But this new channel is what I'm calling my burner channel. We're like, i'm just gonna drop videos no themes no like common themes like this one is talking basketball the other one is also talking basketball and the other one is playing a basketball video game this one has no correlation to all of that the first video i dropped is about manga like like brother i'm reading i, I think i mentioned that in the video before i'm reading hella manga so the first video is about me getting into manga i'm gonna do a video about soccer slash football this week so like you just want other kenny content that's outside of this room don't subscribe, I guess.